Uh, should be stopping number four. How could Miss Collins do this back then? But we aren't able to open these schools in our communities now. This came with a link that takes us to YouTube. A short video. I think I might play it twice, and we'll discuss it. Her life story became a made-for-TV movie, a Chicago teacher creating a prep okay, school with her own money sounds. to give kids... Let me see something. Oh, maybe I did that. Isn't Garfield Park a better future? Mar her life story became a made-for-TV movie, a Chicago teacher creating a prep school with her own money to give kids in Garfield Park a better future. Marva Collins died of natural causes yesterday in South Carolina. CBS 2's Mike Parker has her story. She was a public school teacher in Chicago for 14 years who lost faith in how things were being done. We keep spending more and more money. So the lower the scores are, the more money we spend. But she never lost faith in Chicago's inner city kids. She opened West Side Prep for them. It was private. Accused Socrates, we are not finished of what? Marva Collins taught them not just to learn, but to think. Parents couldn't wait to get their kids under her spell. The city's top cop enrolled his son. He did very well. Uh, she, uh, she she didn't fool around. Marva was like a champion, and she had critics, but she got the job done. The inner city was never the same. Everybody's talking about choice, and everybody's talking about believing all children can learn. That's something Marva Collins was talking about 40 years ago. Teachers never die. They live on through their students, and she has made an indelible impression upon all of us. During her years in Chicago, her goal was to get virtually every student into college, and mostly she succeeded. When she's teaching, Marva Collins said, she feels as if she's touching the future somehow. Live in the newsroom, Mike Parker, CBS 2 News, Robin Kate. Story became a made-for-TV movie, a Chicago teacher creating a prep school with her own money to give kids in Garfield Park a better future. Marva Collins died of natural causes yesterday in South Carolina. CBS 2's Mike Parker has her story. She was a public school teacher in Chicago for 14 years who lost faith in how things were being done. We keep spending more and more money. The lower the scores are, the more money we spend. But she never lost faith in Chicago's inner city kids. She opened West Side Prep for them. It was private. Accused Socrates, we are not finished. Of what? Marva Collins taught them not just to learn, but to think. Parents couldn't wait to get their kids under her spell. The city's top cop enrolled his son. He did very well. Uh, she, uh, she she didn't fool around. Marva was like a champion, and she had critics, but she got the job done. The inner city was never the same. Everybody's talking about choice, and everybody's talking about believing all children can learn. That's something Marva Collins was talking about 40 years ago. Teachers never die. They live on through their students, and she has made an indelible impression upon all of us. During her years in Chicago, her goal was to get virtually every student into college, and mostly she succeeded. When she's teaching, Marva Collins said, she feels as if she's touching the future somehow. Live in the newsroom, Mike Parker, CBS 2 News, Robin Caton. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, so should it be stopping number four? How could Miss Collins do this back then? But we aren't able to open these schools in our communities now. Um, the one comment I have about this news report, I found it interesting. There's a word that this news reporter used. He said they couldn't wait to get their children under her spell. And I, I'm very, when I hear terms like that come up in the media, it perks my ears up. I know, you know, uh, these guys think about shit in these terms, like spells and stuff. Like, uh, if you guys used to listen to the Black Pentagrams, you know, they used to talk about stuff like that a lot. You know, these guys really, the way they word things are spells. And to say that she was able to get people under her spell, I find that very, kind of very interesting how he worded that. 
Um, by the way, have you guys heard from Gastama? Um, you guys in the chat, all the panel could answer that question as well. Uh, let me start with RBG. RBG, what series is this? Oh, shoot. Um, I think it might be a bit of tokenism, perhaps. Um, she was maybe allowed to do that in a way, and it was a way of kind of funneling, you know, talent, as to, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Like, Chicago is very is still heavily black. Um, it's one of it's one of the few cities, big cities in in the United States that's still pretty pretty black. Um, New York. Um, you know what I'm saying? Not so much, but Chicago, yeah, definitely. And you got to have some kind of like, well, we'll still have like a a, a black talented tent, as it were. Um, It's good that she was able to do what she did. And actually, I think that if, uh, the real question is, why couldn't they have 20 of those uh, back in the day back then? Not so much why could she do it then and why can't we do it now? Um, part of it has to do with, like I'm trying to say, it's like allowing the black kids to kind of just be with the black kids back then was kind of like a way of allowing, you know, it was like a safety valve, as it were. You, you got to have some kind of like, you know what I'm saying? You got to let, you know, black folks have something here. You know what I'm saying? Let, you know what I'm saying? It's, I just think that's part of it. Um, it becomes a, 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 what's the word I want to use? Racial showcasing. Um, I don't agree with everything that um, the person who used that term does, but I think that the terminology itself, just kind of a showcase, like a a, a, a floor model, as it were. Um, but, you know, there was still a lot of people in Chicago that didn't get the Mormon college treatment. They didn't get anything close to it. Um, there's reasons for that, certainly. Um, there could have been one Mormon Collins, or there couldn't have been 20 of them. And I'm sure that there were 20 people just like her that wanted to do what she did. Uh, just good, didn't have the connection to have her own private school. Um, these are things you guys got to think about. Um, Chicago still, I mean, it's still funny how Chicago is is ran. There's a lot of overlordism, you know, in Chicago, definitely. With um, you know, what I'm saying there's reasons why they let these things happen like this. That's that's what I think. Um, I don't. I think that there could have. I, I guess again, again, I'm, I'm rambling. The solution to the, the answer is that there. I would say that there's probably there's there should have been more Marvin Collins back then. Um, that's that's all. Uh, RBG, before you go, I uh, I gotta ask you. So, because I've heard this sentiment before, and and you know maybe even in some conversations I've kind of echoed it. Um, do you think? that there's instances of people just being like black folks, just being allowed to do something because it helps the agenda. It makes it, you know, it, it, it kind of debunks some of the complaints against the machine. And so they, you know, they let this stuff pass and say, you know, just so that later on they can say, well, look, she was able to do this and blah, blah, blah. You, you believe that, that, that they do stage some of this stuff. Well, I mean, it's not really staged. It's just managed and funneled and uh, bottlenecked, as it were. Um, again, and, and the, the effect, that I mean, she can be excellent. Well, I mean, there's one person in the whole city of Chicago who can, who can teach black kids excellence? You mean to tell me, like, oh, like, I'm sure she knew some people who could teach? Let's, let's put flesh on the bones. You know what I'm saying? Like let's let's you know, let's let's make it personable. Let's not you know what I'm saying. I'm sure that she's she's not just like you know a hater to like other black people. I'm sure that she tried, but she just could do her best. And in in who you know what I'm saying. I, I read when I was younger. I read about her story. Um, and so I know what it's like. I, I get it. You know what I'm saying. A, a, a genuine, sincere person. I, I would say I would put no nefariousness on on her actions as a teacher. She's trying to teach the babies, and all of them went to school, so she's obviously on her job, right? So it's like again, it's just like there's no one else in Chicago that she knows about. Really, it's not. I I doubt it was like that. I just think that it was a funneling kind of a deal where 
She gets the special treatment, and I'm, we, our money's just, you know, buildings and the roads, and you know what I'm saying? If the cops' kids can go there, it's kind of like mega elite in a way. You know what I'm saying? And so it just happens to be she maybe just had money to do stuff. If she has money to do stuff, she can person be personable to each student. I mean, damn. Under her spell, yeah, I caught that, yeah. Appreciate that, RBG. Uh, Buana, what say you? Yeah, so he asked, he asked about uh, um, he asked them up. and what did <laughs> I mean? Let me address that first, because there was a point in time when a bunch of black men used to come um on shoot the breeze and discuss different kinds of ideas in a very vigorous way. Sometimes we disagree to a point to where we was even challenging each other, getting mad, falling up in one another. And what I recognize from that experience is the fragility of the black male ego. <laughs> the black male ego, the black male ego is something else, man. Because once the black male ego feel like even if it's slightly bruised, or or or. There's, there's, I mean, there's a offense in a sl in the slightest way. You see, the falling off. They want to disassociate. They don't want to talk to you no more. Everybody run into their own little specific sectors. And I always used to say, on every show that I come on, that you have to develop rhinoceros skin. Because yes, there are some things that sometimes are being said that you don't really agree with, that you really can't really take. But we as men, as men, should develop rhinoceros skin to be able to pass through the, the, the fact that, yes, our ego may be bruised, people may challenge us in a way that we may not like, but the bigger goal is the coming together of men, black men, to sharpen ourselves intellectually, to prepare us to go out in everyday life to do the things that we need to do. Men need to come together, collectively organize. We need to discuss where else can we do these kinds of things. We need to challenge one another. Nothing wrong with that. But I find that sometimes when you get in certain forums, <laughs> especially with, ego, with men with egos, when that when that when they um, when they feel like someone, someone, there's an offense given, or when their egos are bruised in any kind of way, these things happen, and it's an unfortunate thing. But I could continue on, because I understand there's a bigger goal at, at hand. So I get, I, I get ignore certain names. In terms of, in terms of this particular instance, I am not a martyr. The black community has a way of saying. I am grateful and I am I, and I thank you in different kinds of ways. Okay? I see how Frances Cress Welsing at the end of her journey in teaching hundreds of people of, of white supremacy and teaching people of psych on, on a psychological basis and then benefiting from her teaching. I see what her end was. Even though she would have taught wealthy people within the black community. The way black people say thank you, say they say thank you, they move on with their own lives and they never look back. These kinds of people should be rewarded tangibly, materially, not just by saying, oh yeah, she used to teach me back in a way and I really appreciate her. No, the way that we need to assist us saying thank you is materially. I see Dr. Ben and how he ended in the institution he, where he ended. And he would have taught hundreds of people in his lifetime the way that we should have say thank you to him is to put him in a place where he was most comfortable with a pillow under his head and 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 a first class black uh, a black uh, person attending to him 24 hours a day this woman is one woman in the south side of chicago she probably would have taught hundreds of people the way that they should say thank you to her is to ensure when they become adults, it's to ensure she have everything she needs tangibly to continue her work. How much people who would have gone through her program would have become multi-millionaires and even look back at her? 
They just say, well, she teach me. The way that we need to say thank you more and more is on a tangible basis. That's not the way to say thank you because if you are willing to do the work itself and these, you have one and two people within their community who are willing to educate and teach and improve the next generation of teacher, you say thank you tangibly. This is the reason why few and few of us becoming martyrs. We say, well, we understand what's going on with the system, but you know, we, don't, we, don't, we only can take care of ourselves because the community ain't gonna look out for us. They don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. And I, I, I fight taking that approach on to things because I feel like there is a bigger goal and, and mindset at hand. So I don't take that approach. Coco been on, on a better medicine for four or five years. You say thank you to these kinds of people because when they pass, you'll no longer hear from them. And they'll be replaced with the Cynthia G's of the world and the Rick Rosses. You know, the people who are complete degenerates. Let them teach your children and you see how that turns out. You see how that turns out because you support them materially and tangibly and you have them living in palatial places. But these people, they pass off of the scene. You never hear from them again. And they would have educated hundreds of children to be productive members of society, which we really need right now. I don't have, you know, but um, my, I, I, have a, <laughs> I, have a, I am close to the ground with these kinds of things because my father was a teacher. And then my father became a principal at his own school. He teach hundreds of children. But when he, well, I'm going to get into that. I just say, saying that, you know, we have martyrs that exist within our communities. I am not a martyr. I do it for profit. I do it for profit. And if people ain't willing to give me something, if they ain't willing to support the, the services that I will be able to provide for them, then I'm going to find another community. And maybe they may uh, appreciate me materially. Because you have people like these that exist always within our community and they, they, they die and pass off the scene unceremoniously. Even, they, they would have commi- even though they would have committed their lives to educating these same children. Hmm. Well, you know, if, 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 the more, if the community won't go, on the, go the way of Rome, if we want to praise and, 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 uh, and respect or venerate dishonorable people and forget about these kinds of people, then so be it. Then so be it. The community goes where it goes. But I fight that kind of notion. I fight that kind of thinking. I fight that kind of mentality internally. I really do. I try to fight that as best as I can. But what I say is I do it for profit. And I think that when you say thank you to women like these and people like these, you have to say thank you materially. When you say, I love this person, love the person, through act, through deed, not through just words. That means nothing, and he never can take that to the mic. But um, I'll stop there, man, because I know I'm rambling, but I'll stop there. Hey, uh, shout out, rest, shout out to you, to your pops, to your dad. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, uh, you know, even though I don't, I don't know if I knew him or not, but, but much appreciated. Um, yeah, that's a you know what, Buana. Thank you for that comment too. I I've been really tackling that issue this week. You know, when my uncle was alive back in the day, he had a political party in the Bahamas, and they had a slogan of "Dare to struggle, dare to win," and that has always stayed with me because because I noticed that. For some reason in the conscious community, there's this struggle mindset. It's about struggle, dare to struggle, dare to win. And so therefore we get our our juggernauts, the people we should be entirely holding up. We get them passing on to the to the next phase, right? We get them dying. Oftentimes in poverty. Oftentimes in poverty. I, I think about that a lot. When I think of Dr. John Henry Clark, I'm like, wow, this guy, folks are still mining his speeches for, for not his writings as well, for knowledge and like and like this guy, I, I, I in fact I believe, funny enough, I believe Tariq Nasheed buried him. Uh 
that should not be that should not be the case no he he paid she paid he, he said he's he said not nah, cool he say he paid for for francis quest wilson funeral he said now that has not necessarily been verified but that's what he said okay all right so so you know that you know that, that's what he said and no one has has countered that statement so i'll just say well you know that's what he said but the idea that our people could just die in a nursing home uh getting treated as just a numbered patient you know that's a shame on our part that's a shame if i if i remember correctly delbert blair died and it was a similar situation. I, in fact, I think something was similar with like with Lyle Africa. And you know, that's that's really not cool. That's really not cool on our part. So, you know, hopefully this sister didn't have that same faith fate. Uh but you know. We got to start supporting the people, the people who are spreading the right messages. You got to support them. The people spreading the the messed up ones, you got to not support them and shun those who do, shame those who do. You know, that's how we have to get through this thing. The messaging is everything. You got to support the messenger. You know, Uh, is there any other last thoughts on this uh, prompt? In the chat. NYC Sports Archive says, tune the right frequency, you'll get people on board. That's why J. Edgar Hoover had a report done on black music. Everything is politics, says, I wonder if she was connected to the black liberation efforts of that time. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be great to, uh, to, to look into that a little bit deeper. Um, can, I, can, I almost, can I ask, ask something? Yeah, I'm just yeah. looking up, you know, her little biography, right? Um, so I mean, at one point she ran a school, a whole school district, and um, well, no, 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 what was it? Um, it was a 2006-7 school year. Her school charged 5,500 for tuition. I'm I'm quoting, uh, and parents said the school did a much better job than Chicago public school system, which budgeted 11,300 per student. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So like even in, in 2006, seven, like she was, she was, she was, she, she was out there, you know what I'm saying? And it, once again, like she was doing, if, if, if they would listen to her and, and, and I'm sure, and, and once again, I'm sure she would say, you know, if you just do this and they would give it a run around and give it a run around and give it a run around. I'm sure that's what happened. happen. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. You have this, you have this woman who's, who's a phenom out in the school. And and you know that she's trying to main she she's a, a mastermind of, of of the schoolhouse. I mean, she she's the master instructor. I mean, you don't want to sit here and, and have apprentices of her. Chicago, she, the Chicago didn't drop the ball. They didn't even pick it up. Well, someone was trying to say something. No, I think uh, I think we were waiting for you to finish there. Oh, I mean, yeah. That I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna keep saying anything else. I just, I just want to say that. I mean, a, a, a marvelous woman. I'm, I'm done. All right. I don't know. Boy, I don't want to say something. Oh, he, he, um, um, he, he said, he said, um, RBG said that she was doing what she was doing less at at half half the cost of what the government was doing. Now, I am not necessarily focused on the rest of Chicago. I am focused on Black Chicago and Black Chicago winning. And I'm saying, when you hear stories like this, Black Black Chicago should get behind females like this and try to reproduce however they can. I'm saying that Black Chicago have a lot of money. They bribe. They they have the biggest stars common and and uh, what's the other rapper's name and all these people coming out of Chicago. Um, Kanye West, whose mother was a professor, by the way. All these educated people coming out of Chicago, they need, the money should be filtering back into these kinds of programs. And I'm not saying that he doesn't do it. 
I'm saying that it needs to be recreated over and over and over again. So you won't see the issues that happening in Chicago. Happening in Chicago, the money should be coming back, in particular with people who are, 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 are making or creating effective changes in the side, inside their community. I worry about the Jewish community in Chicago, nor the immigrant Mexican community in Chicago. I am worried about the black community in Chicago that's been there for decades. And when you see stars like these come, you must support them financially. What is it to brag about being a billionaire? A billionaire. They say, he say, according to I say, I'm the first black billionaire. When you don't have no black other can black people coming up under you, creating that kind of wealth within your community. You just a single person out there. And you know what? You are uh, almost a, a target is being put on your back. The difference between you and the rest of the, 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 your competitors is the Chinese have a billionaire up front, but they have a hundred millionaires surrounding that one billionaire. So if he, he is protected, he is buttressed by the people around him. You out there like this unicorn where for, to have all the black community look up at you and say, look at me, look how good and, and smart I am for getting all this money. But, you, oh, but all the rest of the people around you broke, dumb, stupid, dejected. How long you think you're going to stay with you in that position? You're a damn fool. You're a damn fool. You, you try to repeat people like these. And you coming from a background where you know your mother was an educated woman. You know what I mean? You was forced to get, well, like I say, Coco, I, I'll just leave it there, brother. I'll leave it there. In the chat. Thank you for that, Buana. In the chat, everything is politics says, do we have a value problem as a people? This also reminds me of political prisoners who are forgotten about one of the reasons I'm not willing to go over and beyond for a lot of folks, not worth, in my opinion. Thank you for that, everything is politics. Let's welcome in the brother I Can Fire. I haven't seen this brother in a minute. I Can Fire, how are you tonight? You got to unmute your mic. Yeah, well, I'll go on with people. Bless it. Hey, hey, what's going on? <laughs> Respect, I God. Yes, yes. Yo. So, 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 you must have you must have all this thing, you know, bossy. I'm um, going comment on the last statement, um, which is, have we lost our values? We most definitely have. And, and, um, why aren't we celebrating our real heroes and why do we allow our our um our spiritual food or the people with the spiritual force within the black nation to die poor and alone and all that stuff you feel me? yeah i see myself as one of those heroes also unsung heroes you feel me because me, I've been fighting for my black people um, for like from 92, 93, you feel me? I've been upholding consciousness. But I want to I wanna say, out of all the humans, the black humans that give the most trouble, in the black world in terms of neglecting um consciousness neglecting um wanting to win is our wig wearing hyenas our major problem our wait, wait, wait. I, I, are you talking about black women yep 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 you got it all right, we could uh, we could not call them hyenas, but the wig wearing definitely can get criticized. But continue. Well, I'm not talking about the wig wearing. I'm talking about the people who wearing the wigs. You feel me? I'm talking about the, the the reason why I said it is because you can know them. It's not like they're around and you have to pick who is who they display themselves every day who they are 
You feel me? And 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 what I have to say is, you see, a, a lot of people would be like, "Why are you saying that? Why are you saying that?" But me as a man now, I, I understand that I, I used to suck titties on a on a on a survival level. You feel me? I used to suck titties for my survival, bro. And I don't know about you. You feel me? But that's how I survived. You feel me? And and that 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 makes me um vulnerable to my mother. The, the reason I'm saying this is like a lot of us act like oh we are just men and we're just men and men and men and men. But bro, we were influenced by our mothers on a on a on a on a general level. Not to say we wasn't influenced by fathers too, but on a general level, on a or on a macro level, we were we are all most likely um influenced by our mothers. So we really need to pay more attention to the upbringing of our woman. You feel me? We need to pay more attention to that because we got to stop her from raising bitch ass niggas. You feel me? Or stupid, or, or what you call idiot boy. You feel me? Both bitches, bitch ass niggas and idiot boy. We have to stop them from raising idiot boy. Idiot boy. You feel me? Emotional um black men that don't know that only fight weak people. So so I can find, so, so I can the blame is the blame is ours then if we're not replacing them as the teacher. Now, I agree with you. I, I've said it here many times. The, the woman is supposed to be the first teacher. That's what that's what we always talk about. She but is. Yet, when the man is not there for being, a, for being a B-A-N, like you just said, when the man is not there because he went and got locked up or got himself killed or he just ran away, uh... What are you women? This is something gas them up used to talk about. What are you yeah, women but teaching these kids? But yeah, but time, hold on, hold on, hold on. At the same time, what are we doing? Well, like we can't sit by like your like your suggestion. We can't sit by and let women raise these guys who become you know this negative influence in the community. What's the I I can say something about that. It, the, the, it's the it's the um it's the no understanding level. Are this this is what I have to say, right? It's like when you when you encounter um our people, you don't know their mind. If you may, you can meet a dude and he's acting off the influence of his mother. You feel me? And you be like, oh, this dude did that. And it's a dude who did it. But you don't know that he's really acting off the influence of his mama. You feel me? So, so he, he, you could blame him, but, on, but you not, don't know the psychology of the individual to know that he's acting off an emotional level that he got taught from by his mama. Even, but but so so what I'm trying to say so what I'm trying to say is um big man what I'm trying to say is that's why me as a man I'm bringing this forward because we as men need to set up organizations and structures in order to discipline ourselves and our women. If you may, first of all what you got to understand is it's because of colonization why our women are the way they are 
and our men are the way they are. So we, we, we beyond our women, we still have a force that is that is um, determined on keeping us stupid, you feel me, and keeping our women against consciousness. So we still have to maintain to know that, and that's why I'm I have we have to spend more time and more focus on our woman because our woman is like what you call weaker so they are being they are being submissive to the force that is that is perpetuating lust and greed and 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 um luxury and you know what i mean the the force is doing that to them you feel me? And in order to win, we actually maybe have to go through some hard times. You feel me? And the woman is not ready for anything like that. You feel me? So we have a problem on our hands, um, big men. You feel me? Uh, does anyone want to comment to what I can have to say? Yeah, um, but yeah, I, 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 I am in strong concurrence with him in a lot of ways. I mean, you know, men need to teach boys. Ultimately, you know, men need to teach boys. Um, also, uh, I, I, look, um, this this person with these rhetorical questions, you know, what I'm saying this everything is politics. Yo, I, I see you. Um. You haven't made a steady statement the whole hour. You've literally made rhetorical questions all hour. Very um, unstable. Just, just noticing. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I peep it. You know what I'm saying? That's this is a troll, yo. Um, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, let me think. Um, let me think. Uh, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like men need to teach men. Uh, women need to teach men. Need to teach boys. Women need to teach girls. Um. Ideally, especially, um, especially um, in the teenage years, if if anything, that would be ideal. Um, part of this is that you know what I'm saying it's like ha having you know what I'm saying men having the ability to to teach ourselves, and that that was destroyed during uh, uh, integration. I mean, in all honesty, because black people were teaching ourselves, and although you know what I'm saying, we weren't necessarily teaching ourselves to go to school. You know what I'm saying? We're, you know what I'm saying, trying to carry on the traditions of, of Booker T, you know what I'm saying, and, and trying to have some trade schools and actually have, you know what I'm saying, yeah. steady, steady, steady work. And you know what I'm saying, with the whole, like, breakdown of that. And, you know, you need to go to college. You can be, like, third good marshal and go to law school for 85 years. And, you know what I'm saying, how are we going to pay for that? You know what I'm saying? And so I do, I do see on the on on the on the offside of what she's doing, trying to teach kids to go to college because I mean college costs money, and if you don't pass college all the way, you just have to pay back money. So I mean, I you know I can see that she may have in some senses led some kids off into a rougher patch than you know what I'm saying. You know, honestly, work with your hands, work on this field, work on this engine. You know what I'm saying, and and let's do it. You know what I'm saying, work on work on this field, and let's let's get it done. Um, and and honestly get some apprentice skills, you know, be a, be a plumber, be a carpenter, you know what I'm saying? Legitimate things where you can eventually have your own business instead of going to college just to work for some white man. Um, you know, having a sense of, of that is, and again, part of that is not, is, is again, this, we know about the factors, the, the, the external that's like, um, that's just, um, that's just, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just. You watch shorts. You watch shorts on YouTube. The what? You watch shorts on YouTube. Not really. Like I, I do it every once in a while. But what's what's up with the shorts? Well, they have some Indians. They have a, some Indian shorts with Indians um breaking down a lot of metals and turning it into car parts and turning it into all different i like it i'll be like what in the hell is wrong with us where are us where are our people you see me you need to go see those 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 indian um shorts it's not it 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 is like it's very masculine i'd, I'd say 
You feel me? Like they just they make bolts. They make they make um 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 door door knobs. They make um they they make golf balls. They make tennis balls. They make um they just turn stuff, break down old tires and turn it into into other things and make a slippers or make you understand? You need to watch it because um we short of that type of stuff in black race, seriously. You see me? That's uh that's that from Buana. No, I, I I hear what your brother's saying. I have a question though. When when um I can't see the that black men need to, to go to like like I just give like go on our own or go to hard times or whatever. I, I really need to understand what he mean when he said that. You know what I mean? I, I don't know what he mean but he, when he said that. But as far as as far as when um when I can't talk about like um the Indian man them being innovative this like get junk get things where people throw away and then they convert it into usable products usable everyday products of of um, of the people in the country i see i see people do that all the time man and i come from jamaica i can't know that the jamaican man is oh, take products but yes yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, so i mean you you know you know how things run you know how things run so we do it in Jamaica, but I, yes, um, yes. they're kind, of, kind of doing it on a massive scale, though. They're yes, kind of yes. So yes, yeah. So he said he said that why we don't do it on a massive scale where it could benefit uh, like a thousand or a hundred thousand people. I people understand that too. At, all at once. You feel yes, me? yes. Yes, I understand that too. You know, I understand that too. But I, I what, what he's saying? If all right, so on my island. They have a lot of coconuts, right? And the husk, you know, the husk from the coconut, the husk mm -hmm. could be used, that could be converted to make slippers. You know, you know, slip you all know slippers, right? It could be converted to make like the the um the um the heels because it's tough, right? So you could convert that if you have the right tools, you could convert it. You know what I mean? Like how they do in the Philippines and things of that nature. I feel like what he's saying is doable as long as even the poor man on the street, as long as he have the tools to convert it, tools to convert these everyday items, these throwaway items into different kinds of products and things. That's the difference. And I think that sometimes the brothers, I don't know, man, we need to have a connection because the brothers uh, with money. Are uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the industrial area to go learn it? In the that's true. That's true. That's true. That that's true too. I think that Jamaica, Jamaica have industrial, Jamaica have industrial schools. Jamaica have industrial schools. Okay. Anyways, I mean, anyways, I mean, you know, you know, um, I don't know, Caribbean. We we have a, a, a um some industrial areas and yes, some of yes. those those areas where people make make um like they make. Pots like aluminum yes. pots. In yes, that's right. That's right. That that's right. That's right. They, they yes. do that, but it's on a small scale. It's on small yes. scale. Yes, you yes, 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 yes. And I, and I know you. Yeah, 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 go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I know you talking. I know you talking about millions of people because right now I think you're living in the states. So you are saying how it could, how it could benefit millions of people. And I'm actually talking about Africa. I'm actually talking about Africa. Um, still millions. Still, still millions of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still millions of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I just think it's, it's workable. It's workable. It's just getting the products to Africa and then then using it to, to reproduce it, to make uh, to sell it to millions of people. It's I understand what the, you're saying. I do. I really do. Kids. It's just the skills you need in Africa. Africa has all the products. have all the... um raw material to do things it's just the skills to break it down from where where it's at to the other level you feel me and that's all it needs and and some caribbean people have some technologies some americans black americans have some technology we just need to we as men as i as i'm telling you we as men let me tell you pan-africanism and black consciousness it's generally men have been upholding that thing since since the 60s i don't know about before because i wasn't born but 
since I was I got understanding, it's mostly men who are upholding consciousness, and it is very disappointing about our women. And seriously, I get I'm getting real pissed off about how how free our women are to make decisions. You feel me? And we need to stop it. I, somehow we need to stop that shit. You feel me? Go on, go on, go on TikTok. Go on, go on anywhere. You see our woman all over the fucking place. Sorry, excuse me. All over the place talking. They just talking, 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 talking. You feel me? Making all type of decisions and proposals and all different type of things. Now these, to me, these Palestinians and these Arabs need to be vanquished out of Africa. And, and our women are all over the place defending these set of enemies. You feel me? Even though, even though Jews are our enemies, the Arabs are our enemies too. And they are closest enemies, actually. You feel me? The ones mainly to get rid of, because they are buffer zone, you feel me, in Africa for wickedness. You feel me? And, and, and our women are, have no interest in Africa. Our women don't like Africans. They, they want white people, white babies, white every goddamn thing. As far as I'm concerned, the, 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 typical, the typical Negro woman. But I can't. Babies, I can't. All that they but want. I, but I can't. I can't. Use a I can't. Use a Rasta man, right? Use a Rasta man. Yeah. The Rasta woman ain't into no European business. The Rasta woman, uh, my sister, I raw I tell is a Rasta woman. I think she's a Rasta woman. They don't they ain't into no European business. So I mean, <laughs> with some ball head woman. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, um, man. Nah, man. Hey, don't don't be laughing, bro. Just keep it serious. You feel me? Too too many comedians in the black world. And dancers, let's keep it serious. Now hold up, bro. We are talking about the black race here. Rastafari is not a tribe, and it's not a race. It's our people. We are all the same. We ain't different. Being a Rasta and being a, a, another black person ain't different. It's just another black person decide that they don't want no consciousness. You feel me? So my problem is. Our women don't want no consciousness. In on a general level, you talking about your sister or whoever you talking about. But how much? Her, how, how where is her team? How much people is behind her? How much people is like her? How much other woman is like her? Um, Mister Barbados. How much other woman is like her? Huh? Why are you so much? Let me. Right. Yeah, why are so much heathen women around? It's Bahamas, by the way. Bahamas, Bahamas. But go ahead. Well, what what I what I what I say in is what I say in is okay. I understand where you coming from. What I say in is mm. that you was you will never well, I have never seen a situation where you have a hundred percent agreement on anything. Right? Now you want I don't care. Listen, hold on. Wait, let me wait, finish, wait. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me yeah, finish no, no. Yeah, go. Okay. All right. I have never seen a hundred percent of women agree on any particular thing. So even if you get sixty percent of the women to agree to what you're talking about right now, right? Sixty percent. You wake on the sixty percent. You don't wake on the people. Don't you don't wake on the forty percent. You watching the forty percent of the women who are on YouTube talking a bunch of foolishness. And my thing is focus on the sixty percent. The sixty percent of the people who are actually listening to what you have to say. No I mean, man, because, you can't look at no. You trying to get it a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'm opposing what you are saying. You know why? Um, consciousness is not on that on that um rate. Consciousness in the black world is at a two percent rate or a five percent rate, bro. Well, if you start, if you if you say if so, it's five percent. So, so, so you what I'm five. saying, no, all right, listen to what okay. I'm saying. Yeah. We, okay. we, need, we need a critical mass in order to overwhelm the oppressive system. You feel me? For everybody to win, everybody black to win. 
If you mean you have a set of pe Negroes who think that bootlicking is the winning way. If you mean who think that licking white ass and want to be white is the way to go. I mean, like, but not only that, you have a force that is perpetuating this type of behavior and trying to keep it that way. And our women are the targets. You know why? Because our women are actually more powerful than us as men. If you may, if you can get the woman to teach the men to be idiots before they 18, then you're, um, the oppressor wins because you're going to have a set of um, um, tap dancing Negroes, you feel me? Boot licking Negroes, and that's all they need. You don't need no. You're not gonna have no no um black identity extremist Negro. You <laughs> feel me? You gonna have this Negro that be earrings all over himself and and all cut color hair in his goddamn head and all that type of shit. You mean mohawk, all different type of shit. You feel me? So, so as long as these women are breeding these type of Negroes, we gonna uh, uh, the, them Negroes gonna take us out. You know how much conscious people those type of Negroes took out, like Malcolm X, huh? Some boot licking Negro that some woman raised took him out. Sometimes we need to watch what we support because it going to come back at you. You feel me? And we need to start. We need to. to yeah, I, I, I like this program, though. You feel me? You see how. You see how. You see, but look, you see how dormant your program looks. Two views. Yeah. Yes. Oh. And, and you know what? And you know what? And you know what? Yeah. yeah. And you know, and you know what icon? And you know what icon? Even mm -hmm. though our even though our views is a hundred views the most, I wake mm -hmm. on a hundred. I waking up. We are we are collectively waking on a hundred views because a hundred the hundred people who are actually listening to us could be more powerful than the people who than a hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. And, 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 and and I, I, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not go, doing, I'm not trying, I respect your program. Yeah. But I'm just talking about our critical mass that we need to win. Yes, sir. But, but why go on? And, 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 and hold up, and hold up. So I'm just trying to talk, tell you that it's the idiots that's not listening to your program. I don't mind that. Know? I don't mind that. I don't. I try to get. We are not trying to recruit the idiots. Icon. We are. We trying to recruit the brothers like yourself who understand. I trying to recruit the brothers. Them. We are. We collectively are trying to recruit people who understand and who could take it to somewhere else. I want no. We don't want no idiots. We don't want no black. Whether they, we don't but want no black idiots. You, but let me tell you something, big man. It's the woman mostly that don't like the bitter medicine. <laughs> the, the women listen, my brother, my brethren, at Raw Raw Aital is a Jamaican woman who's listen listening to us every Saturday night. Pauline is a, a Bohemian woman who listens to us every Saturday yeah, night, man. and there are several other there are several other women who consistently listen to us. They love oh, us. Shit. Don't I? Oh, I don't. Shit. I don't want Cynthia. I don't want Cynthia G them to listen to us. I fire with the women we have so far because we got add to that. That's why we wake in. We wake in. I call man. Give us some time. Yeah, bro, give us some nah, time. Bro, I'm, not, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, my lord. Keep it going though. But I am not appreciating our woman. I I I, I truly, genuinely appreciate the few. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not like, oh, I'm not appreciating the few. I would never do that. You feel me? But but the 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 to, 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 to for you to understand how dangerous our woman is. You feel me? We have to 
look into the, those who are not interested in consciousness, bro. And we need to we need to go at them. I swear we need to go at them. It's either it, uh, listen, listen, man. Let me tell you something. This 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 thing is like it's either you either either you die or you fight. It's either you die or you on 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 the consciousness side, and that's how I'm looking at things, bro. You feel me? All this, all these little heathen type of behavior that these people love. I'm telling you, they they release. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, bro. These set of women are releasing pure tyrants on us every school year. You feel me? Every school year they releasing tyrants. Negroes that will jump over the wall and shoot you for nothing. You feel me? Because they upset how you look at them, bro. Some Negroes that will never fight white people because they know white people got helicopter gunships and goddamn um, RPG missiles, bitch. You feel me? Cowardly little Negroes. I don't like that shit. If I know um um Mr. Bah Bahama people, like Bahama people, right? I would never try to talk shit about Bahama people. You feel me? Cause why? It ain't Bahama people who own missiles and 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 helicopter gunships and 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 goddamn nukes and all. It ain't Bahama people doing that. Why would I? Why would I go at Bahama people? I would be a coward in little germs. And that's what I don't like about some of so, uh, what's going on. Because um, these women are raising a set of Negroes that don't like Africa and don't like other Negroes and don't like Caribbean people and don't like and care and some Caribbean people don't like um other people and uh, all this type of disgraceful attitudes um is coming out of some crazy ass negro you see me stuff that he hear from his mama just because his mama like um want to bleach want to bleach her skin that's what's going on don't like nothing black i appreciate this lady you see me but she she was like this lady on the screen but she's just a liberal they just they just a, a set of liberals who who who, who um I want to be white. I mean, they in the black world, but they want to be white. They want to be included in the in the um status quo. But she just I I don't know her. I don't I don't want to say nothing bad. But I just but you know that she wanted to. She was introducing. She was emphasizing on college. She wanted that college thing going on, which just turned us into. Homosexuals. <laughs> I can fire. Thanks for joining us. But stick around because we're going to go into what's probably the last prom for tonight. I uh, appreciate everyone who's in the chat tonight. Make sure you share the show. Uh, let's get the numbers up. I've been working my damnness behind the scenes. To get these numbers up legitimately too I, I could have faked the funk but legitimately trying to get the numbers up and um it, it's difficult man our folks aren't a lot you know the, the critical mass as i can say is not really looking for the information so we're we're preaching to the minorities you know before we move on to the next problem let's uh let's welcome in our brother bakari this week bakari how are you What's going on, man? I'm good. How about y'all? Good, good. Thanks for joining us. Respect, Bakari. Yeah. What's going on? Respect. <laughs> you was about to move on to your next prompt. I I was about to, but if you wanted to add something to this one, by all means. I was just I was just looking at the uh, you know. I've been in and I really don't know what much said, but reading this, how could she open those schools back then, but we aren't able to do 
in our communities now. I think the biggest difference is today we don't want to. Today we feel there's not a need to do it. We perform better. We do better as a race, as a group. In our communities, when I were back, is absolutely against the wall. Even though His Excellency, the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, said we don't want our backs there because it's an uncomfortable position. But that's when we tend to do our best. Coming out of slavery, coming through Reconstruction, the towns and the communities that we were able to build with only a few people being able to read and write, we had all of the skills to build, to plant, to grow, to clean, cook. So we were able to do things. Our back was against the wall, right? So now we don't feel we are, we have become comfortable in the subjugation. I don't know if that's the right word that we're going through. So we will do better once our back is against the wall. So for me, the answer to that is we don't want to. We don't see a need to. We're okay. That's my take on it. I you, Mike. I appreciate that. And I agree with that, Bakar. I think we we uh we don't see the value in it no more. There's other lanes you could aspire to <clears throat> to go down. And I, and those lanes don't require education. So um I think we just we just uh, you know we just do the low hanging fruit type stuff, the shit that they give us. Yeah, I think I think once AC came in the houses, it's like it was done right there. Like everybody's good now. Yeah, I feel you on that. Uh thanks, Bakari. Uh stick around for the last prompt. This should be the last one. We'll do shoot debris topic number five tonight. Please mute your mic. <clears throat> 